Think about your smartphone. It's a supercomputer, a camera, a music player, all in your pocket. That didn't just happen overnight. It took a ton of work to get from an idea to a device we use every day. We're going behind the scenes to see how innovative gadgets are made. We see the finished product, sleek and polished, but we don't always see the effort behind it. The brainstorming, the testing, the manufacturing, it all adds up. But understanding that process, that's where the real magic happens. So buckle up because we're about to uncover the secrets behind some of the coolest gadgets out there. Every gadget from the simplest earbuds to the most complex VR headset starts with an idea. Maybe it's a way to solve a problem, or maybe it's just something that would be really cool to have. But those initial sparks, those what ifs, are the seeds of innovation. Enter the creative teams. Engineers, designers, programmers, all working together to turn a concept into a concrete plan. They research the market, figure out what people need and what they don't even know they need yet, and start sketching out what the gadget will look like and how it will work. This stage is all about exploration and experimentation. You might be thinking this is interesting and all, but why should I care how gadgets are made? Here's the thing, understanding the process gives you a whole new appreciation for the technology you use every day. Knowing how gadgets are made also makes you a more informed consumer. You start to understand why some products are more expensive than others, and you can make smarter decisions about what you're buying. You might even be inspired to start tinkering and creating your own gadgets. And in a world that's constantly evolving, that ability to innovate is more important than ever. Ever wonder where gadget ideas come from? It's not just some secret lab with crazy scientists. Okay, maybe sometimes it is, but often it starts much simpler. Think about everyday problems. That annoying thing your phone charger does, someone thought, we can fix that. Teams get together and they think about what's missing in the world of tech. They look at trends, what people are asking for online, what current gadgets struggle with. This research is key. These early stages are about finding that sweet spot, innovative, doable, and something people can actually afford. Section two, where inspiration meets innovation. Inspiration can come from anywhere. Nature is a big one. Ever notice how headphones are kind of shaped like ears or how some cameras mimic the human eye? Biomimicry it's called, and it's a goldmine for gadget design. But it's not just about looks. Sometimes nature has already solved a problem we're struggling with. Velcro, for example, was inspired by burrs sticking to clothes. Pop culture plays a role too. Sci-fi movies and books often show futuristic tech that sparks the imagination. And let's not forget about accidents. Some of the best inventions happen by chance. Section 3. From Napkin Sketches to Digital Dreams So you've got an idea, you've brainstormed, you've been inspired, now what? Time to make it real, or at least a version of it. Early prototypes are usually pretty basic. Think cardboard, glue, maybe some spare parts from other gadgets. The goal here isn't to make it pretty, it's about testing the core concept. Does it work like you thought it would? What needs to change? This is where CAD, or computer-aided design, comes in. Designers use software to create detailed three-dimensional models of the gadget. It's like a virtual proving ground for gadgets. Section 1. Prototyping. The gadget's first steps. We've got the blueprints, the digital mock-ups, but holding the real deal, that's a different feeling. Prototyping. That's where the rubber meets the road, where ideas become something you can touch. Early on, these prototypes, they're not pretty. Think of it like a rough draft for a gadget. You're not worried about perfect grammar or spelling, you just want to get the story down. These early models, they might be cobbled together with whatever's lying around cardboard, duct tape, even parts salvaged from other gadgets. The beauty of this stage is it's all about experimentation. Try something, see if it works. If it doesn't, no big deal, you learn something, you adjust, you try again. The art of iteration fail fast, fail often. There's this saying in the tech world, fail fast, fail often. It sounds counterintuitive, right? But in the world of prototyping, failure is your friend. Every time a prototype doesn't work as planned, it's an opportunity to learn and improve. Think of it like sculpting. You start with a block of clay and you gradually chip away at it, refining the shape until you achieve your vision. 
each prototype is like a step closer to the final product. You identify flaws, you make adjustments, you test again. By embracing failure early on, you increase your chances of success in the long run. Tools of the trade, from 3D printing to Arduino. Remember the days of carving prototypes out of wood or painstakingly soldering components together? Thankfully, technology has come a long way. Today's gadget creators have an arsenal of tools at their disposal, making prototyping faster, more precise, and way more fun. One of the biggest game changers is 3D printing. Need a custom casing for your prototype? Just design it on your computer and hit print. 3D printers can create incredibly intricate and durable parts, allowing you to test different designs with ease. Then there's the world of microcontrollers, with platforms like Arduino leading the charge. These tiny computers are like the brains of your prototype. Beyond function, the user experience. It's easy to get caught up in the technical aspects of prototyping, but there's another crucial element that often gets overlooked, the user experience. A gadget might function perfectly, but if it's clunky, confusing, or just plain unpleasant to use, nobody's going to want to use it. This is where ergonomics come into play. How does the gadget feel in your hand? Is it comfortable to hold? Are the buttons easy to reach? These might seem like minor details, but they can make or break a product. Prototyping allows you to test different interface designs and get feedback from real users, ensuring that your gadget is both functional and enjoyable to use. The factory floor, where dreams become reality. You've seen those videos, right? Rows of robots moving with precision, putting together complex gadgets at lightning speed. That's the magic of the factory floor, where the journey from prototype to product hits overdrive. Factories today are high-tech ecosystems. We're talking automated assembly lines, robotic arms placing tiny components with surgical precision, and sophisticated systems tracking every step of the process. It's a symphony of engineering, logistics, and human expertise. But it's not all robots and lasers, though there are plenty of those. Human technicians and engineers are essential to oversee the process, troubleshoot issues, and ensure everything runs smoothly. They're the conductors of this complex orchestra of manufacturing. Supply Chain Symphony, orchestrating the components. Ever think about what goes into your smartphone? I mean, really goes into it? We're talking hundreds of components, each one a tiny marvel of engineering sourced from all corners of the globe. Managing this complex web of suppliers is a monumental task, a delicate dance of logistics and timing. The journey of a single component from a mine in Africa to a factory in Asia can be astonishingly complex. Raw materials are extracted, refined, processed, and shipped across continents, each step involving multiple companies and intricate coordination. This globalized supply chain brings both challenges and opportunities. Quality control. No room for error. Imagine spending months, even years, developing a groundbreaking gadget only to have it ruined by a faulty button or a scratched screen. Quality control is the unsung hero of the manufacturing process, ensuring that every single gadget that rolls off the assembly line meets the highest standards. This isn't just about aesthetics. A loose connection, an improperly calibrated sensor, even a tiny speck of dust can render a gadget useless or worse, dangerous. Quality control is about protecting the user and maintaining the integrity of the product. Inspectors use a battery of tests, from visual checks to x-ray scans, to identify any defects. Section 4. The Human Element, the Unsung Heroes of Tech. It's easy to get caught up in the technology of gadget manufacturing, the robots, the automation, the sheer scale of it all. But we can't forget the human element, the skilled workers who bring these gadgets to life. From the engineers who design the production lines to the technicians who calibrate the machines, human expertise is at the heart of it all. These are the people who troubleshoot problems, who spot defects that machines might miss, who ensure that every gadget meets the highest standards. They are the unsung heroes of the tech world, and their work is essential to the success of any gadget. As technology continues to evolve, the role of human workers in the manufacturing process will continue to change as well. All right, time to get specific. 
Let's talk about a gadget revolution, the smartphone. Remember when phones were just for, you know, calling people? The journey from brick phones to pocket computers is a masterclass in innovation. It all started with a need, a desire to be connected, to communicate more easily. Early mobile phones were clunky, expensive, and had limited functionality, but they planted the seed for what was possible. Then came the Palm Pilot, the BlackBerry, devices that hinted at the power of mobile computing of email and apps in your pocket. But it was the iPhone in 2007 that truly changed the game. Apple's sleek design, intuitive interface, and focus on apps, it shifted the paradigm. Suddenly, a phone wasn't just a phone, it was a portal to a world of information, entertainment, and connectivity. This sparked a wave of innovation. Competitors like Samsung, LG, and Google stepped up their game, pushing the boundaries of what a smartphone could be. Screens got bigger, processors got faster, cameras rivaled standalone devices, and with each iteration, the smartphone became more deeply integrated into our lives. The Evolution of Gaming Consoles, a story of pixels and power. Let's talk about gaming consoles. From blocky pixels to photorealistic graphics, gaming has evolved immensely. Early consoles like Atari and Nintendo brought arcade games home. Simple joysticks and 8-bit graphics captivated a generation. The 16-bit era saw Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo battling for supremacy. Games became more complex, graphics more detailed, soundtracks more immersive. The original PlayStation introduced three-dimensional graphics, a seismic shift. Today consoles like the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X render near-reality graphics. Innovation in game design and online connectivity drives the industry forward. Section 3, Wearable Tech from Fiction to Fitness Trackers. Remember Dick Tracy's wristwatch phone? What was once a futuristic fantasy is now commonplace. Wearable tech, from smartwatches to fitness trackers, has seamlessly integrated into our lives, monitoring our health, keeping us connected, and even making payments. Early attempts at wearable tech were often bulky and impractical. But as technology miniaturized and battery life improved, new possibilities emerged. Fitness trackers like Fitbit popularized the idea of tracking our steps, heart rate, and sleep patterns, making us more aware of our health. Smartwatches took it a step further, bringing smartphone functionality to our wrists. We could receive notifications, make calls, even track our location, all without taking our phones out of our pockets, and with the rise of voice assistants like Siri and Alexa, we could control these devices with just our voice. But wearable tech isn't just about convenience, it's also transforming healthcare. Medical-grade wearables can monitor vital signs, detect falls, even predict seizures, and as the technology continues to evolve, we can expect even more innovative applications in the years to come. Section 1. The Circle of Innovation So, there you have it. We've gone from that initial spark of an idea, that what-if moment, all the way to a finished gadget ready to change the world, or at least make your life a little easier. It's a journey with more twists and turns than your average tech review, but that's the beauty of it. Remember, it's not a straight line from point A to point B. It's messy, iterative, full of dead ends and unexpected breakthroughs. But that's how innovation works. You try, you fail, you learn, you try again. And somewhere in that process, something amazing emerges. And it's not just about the tech itself, it's about the people behind it. The dreamers, the designers, the engineers, the factory workers, all those minds coming together, each playing a crucial role in bringing these gadgets to life. Think about the impact these gadgets have had. Smartphones have revolutionized communication. Gaming has created immersive worlds we can escape into. Wearable tech is changing the way we monitor our health. And this is just the beginning. Section 2. The future is unboxed, so what's next? What mind-blowing gadgets are just over the horizon? I don't have a crystal ball, though that would be a cool gadget idea, but one thing's for sure, the pace of innovation isn't slowing down. If anything, it's accelerating. We're on the cusp of incredible advancements in artificial intelligence, virtual and augmented reality, robotics, and who knows what else. The line between science fiction and reality is blurring more and more each day, but here's the thing I find most exciting. It's not just about the gadgets themselves, it's about what we with them. Every new piece of technology is a tool, and like any tool, it can be used for good or for bad. 
It's up to us, the creators, the consumers, the citizens of this tech-driven world to ensure that these innovations are used responsibly, ethically, and for the betterment of humanity. The future is unwritten, unboxed, and waiting for us to define it. Let's make it a good one.